Jean-Claude Van Damme was a real action star and simply an icon of his time. Everyone, whose childhood or youth at least somehow touched the late 80s and 90s, remembers what a cult personality the Belgian actor was back then, how crazy about him, dreaming to repeat his trademark splits and twirls. In those years, the fame of Jean-Claude thundered and seemed to be forever. But as we know, nothing is everlasting in this world. So after years of incredible rise, the actor then, overnight, simply disappeared. And now, not only in the movies, but even off-screen appears extremely rare. What happened? Why has Hollywood suddenly turned away from its recent favorite? Is it his own fault? And also, how now lives the former star of the action movie? And is the talk about his incredible plight true? Well, I'll start with Van Damme's biography. Jean-Claude himself is Belgian. He was born back in 1960 in Brussels. From a fairly young age he took up sports. And first it was bodybuilding, and then it was karate and kickboxing, in which Van Damme really reached certain heights, gaining a black belt, becoming the European champion and later the three-time world champion. So the training of the future action star was very good. And at the end of the 80s Jean-Claude's hour of stardom began. First, he lit up in the film Do Not Retreat and Do Not Give Up in 1986. By the way, it was then that the actor corrected his complicated name of Van Varenberg for more understandable and resounding, Van Damme. Well, in the next year, 1987, the young actor was supposed to appear in the legendary Predator, and not in the role of the fighters with alien creatures, and just the same in the suit of the Predator. But it did not work, because in the process Van Damme was unceremoniously kicked out of the site. And the version of how it happened, diverge. The official version is that the actor was too short for the role. So, allegedly, the filmmakers decided that such a predator is not too impressive, and therefore changed Van Damme. True, he himself says quite the opposite. The reason he was eventually fired, according to the actor, had to do with his refusal to do a stunt he thought was unsafe. It was as if the director had asked him to do a jump that Van Damme thought was too risky. He refused and was fired. Where it's true and where it's not, it's hard to say now. But, since Predator, some members of the film industry began to talk about Jean-Claude as a rather capricious and even capricious actor. We'll talk about the impact of this characteristic on Van Damme's entire career in more detail next. In the meantime, let's go back to the end of the 80s, when films like Bloodsport, Kickboxer, and Wall happened, which actually started the incredible career of the previously unknown Belgian in Hollywood. Since the early 90s, Jean-Claude began to appear in at least one or two films every year, playing, of course, positive and of course, the main characters. Thanks to that, in a couple of years every schoolboy knew who Jean-Claude Van Damme was. So just a few films have made nobody in Hollywood a known Belgian world celebrity. After that, the roles poured out. Double Jeopardy, Universal Soldier, Hard Target, Not a Street Fighter, and many, many films of a similar nature that finally rooted Van Damme's name in the ranking of the top action stars of the 90s. So it was that decade that we can safely call his golden age, when Van Damme was constantly starring, was a regular guest star at all sorts of social events, featured in commercials and so on. In short, Jean-Claude was at his peak. But then what happened? And then several factors coincided. First, the action film genre, precisely in its classic form, began to gradually lose its popularity. Cinema began to change over time, and heroes like the characters of the same Seagal, Stallone or Lundgren, were replaced by new types like Neo, Brad Pitt's character in Fight Club and so on. Whereas the actors, including of course Van Damme himself, weren't too keen to change. As a consequence, the films with their participation irreversibly went downhill. Plus, of course, Jean-Claude himself was not getting younger and it was more and more difficult for him to play the role of tough guys. But most importantly, if you believe the actor, he entered into a long and difficult conflict with the movie bosses. After all, the fact is that despite its status as a global star, Jean-Claude in Hollywood and remained a foreigner, an outsider who is not taken as seriously as other American stars. Well, the actor, in turn, began to demand the same treatment and, most importantly, similar fees. This was the beginning of the end for him. 
Van Damme claimed to have been blacklisted by Hollywood when he tried to get the studios to give him as much money as stars like Jim Carrey, for example. In an interview with The Guardian, the actor said that it happened when he turned down a major role in a movie because he wanted something better, tried to get for themselves more favorable conditions. But the world of big movie turned out to be cruel and refused to play by the rules imposed from the outside. So, instead of increased royalties, the Belgian actor got a boycott and oblivion. Producers simply did not want to pay him as much as he demanded. After that, Van Damme tried his luck as a director, such as the film Seeking Adventure, where Jean-Claude played, of course, and the main role. The former star's career took a sharp downturn. He still continued to act, but in more and more niche projects. And by the end of the millennium completely disappeared from the radar of viewers. However, Van Damme's voice is still heard by foreign audiences, for example in such projects as Kung Fu Panda 3 or New Minions. By the way, in addition to the financial issue, Van Damme by the end of the 90s also cemented his status, so to speak, as a difficult actor. After all, the ambitions of action hero has increased and, according to many colleagues, to work with him was becoming more and more difficult. It is clear that it is difficult to work with such an actor. As another example, a strange interview with an action star in Australia. When he was asked a perfectly civil question about how he was doing, Van Damme suddenly lost his temper, began to shout that he had been asked the same stupid questions for 25 years, and simply interrupted the interview. Plus, we should not forget that in his time Van Damme had time to dabble, like many of his star colleagues, cocaine. According to the actor, by the beginning of the millennium he spent for this fun of $10,000 a week. Understandably, it was a significant blow to the actor's career and health. Which even led to a real addiction and bipolar disorder. Although, by the way, Van Damme may have had it before, but it just intensified under this action. Be that as it may, among other things, to work with the actor was simply unbearable. So Hollywood stopped. So over the next 10 years from 1999 to 2008 the actor himself has made as many as 14 films with himself, of course, in the title role. But none of them became a success. So, as you can see, things were getting worse and worse for the former action star. So what is happening now with the former idol? And now Jean-Claude Van Damme mainly lives in Belgium, although he regularly visits the United States. He raises children and practically does not make movies. From time to time there are rumors about the extremely poor financial situation of the former star, which is difficult to confirm or deny. I found information on the internet that the total financial condition of Jean-Claude Van Damme at the moment is estimated at $35 million. Part of that money the Bloodsport star spends on expensive cars. Well, there you have it, the story of the former action star. And if you've been watching the video, give it a thumbs up, don't forget to write a comment and of course subscribe to the channel.